All right. Well, welcome back. We return to the Captain's Auction Pinball Auction of October 15, 2022, and we have a special treat here coming up. We have the complete set of Atari production pinball machines. We start out with this Superman, uh, easily the most popular Atari pinball machine uh, for lots of great reasons. Perfect mirrored back glass art, uh, which captures the theme, as well as a great play field layout. Um, the one, two, three, four, uh, with the offsets and the top, always a great start to the ball. And then having to complete and spell out the Superman, the great sounds of this game, just tremendous package all the way around. The quality of the artwork starts in the back glass and it continues throughout the plastics, smart enough to make the plastics carry over the art you know, throughout the Fortress of Solitude lane. Just amazing. Great, great work done on this game. Um, classic, classic uh, artwork in the comic era that befits the Superman comics. And so just a tremendous piece of work. And just, I just want to play this game, but we don't have time for that. Anyway, so that's Superman. And then we have the entire run of the Atari machines that preceded in production. Airboard Avenger for Steve Ritchie's game. Um, just going to take a look at the back glass and some of the great play field art that is always a trademark of the Atari pinball machines. Uh, all of Atari always had great art, great cabinets. Space Riders, the awesome mirrored back glass, just amazing look to this game. Um, I remembered each and every one of these Atari pinball machines coming out when I was in the bowling alley. It was always fun to see a new wide body Atari come out. A lot of people don't realize that Atari was quite the innovator in pinball machines. Um, they were. They were quite early in the Solid State Pinball Derby. We're going to see that in just a minute. Here's Middle Earth. You can see the great dinosaur theme. Another very memorable design. Uh, great uh, playfield art and the famous offset flippers. Time 2000, the um, kind of more symbolic uh, back glass, which was very kind of cool too. Uh, very kind of influential on me as a kid looking at this game. Um, you see the artwork of this play field as well, just a beautiful game. And the double sets of flippers. And the very first Atari pinball machine, one of the very first solid state machines of all. Uh, the Atarians uh, had some very innovative features about it. The, um, instead of having conventional rollovers, they had, um, you know, it was beneath the play field. So it was very, very cool in this layout. This is a relatively rare pinball machine. Um, not a lot of survivors of Atarians that I have seen out there in the wild. And, of course, to top it off, here is Hercules. Fully working Hercules. Just a treat to see this game and do what it's supposed to do. And here, for scale, is what Hercules looks like next to the wide body pinball machines <laughs> that are there. So with this pullback shot, you're going to see the entire Atari lineup in order. And uh, I can't resist. I know I'm not supposed to be playing these games, but you know, it's cool when you can actually see a Hercules do what it's supposed to do. Because they often don't, and that is definitely a bummer. I'm gonna see it and make the plunger shot. Oh, I can't play with one hand though. But yeah, it's uh, it's great. Too much fun. So that is the Hercules. Uh, I'll finish this after the video is done. And as a kind of a bonus, the Atari Video Pinball. And this is uh, something that not everybody knows about. I guess if you were back in the earth like, like me, you certainly would. But it was really kind of cool because what this did was it incorporated a physical um, kind of background along with the uh, reflected black and white video game in it. And so it was very much a hybrid game. And the cool part was you could also nudge this game you know, with the play field. So that was cool. But, you know, definitely something attempt to be of the future here. And I'm playing it a little bit so you can kind of see what it looks like. And, you know, that classic early Atari sound. So Atari really was covering its bets in both directions. It was hoping that, you know, obviously they'd be successful on the pinball front. But, hey, maybe this was the future. So, fortunately, it wasn't all the future. So that's Atari Video Pinball. Another great novelty here from Allied Leisure. This is Sea Hunt, and this is a shaker ball game. This game, you can see through here, is actually um, a composite of or things that appear in the lit up like the game over. It's kind of hard to kind of see that. And then the reflected play field beneath it. 
And so when you play Sea Hunt, you're actually playing a pinball machine that's, if I pan down, the play field is actually below. And then you are looking at its reflection in the mirrored half mirror glass. The mirror glass. Two cocktail games. This is cool. This is a Night Movers. Um, and this was from International Concepts. It's a, a cool game to have here as well. Um, and I don't really see if we can get the sound on this, but uh, yeah, there we go. I don't know. If, if you're of a certain age, uh, I tilted it because I hit the corn door, but there you go. You just can't beat this. We're just going to leave this on in the background because we know YouTube can't give us a strike for this music. All right. As the music goes on, Allied Star Shooter. Um, another cocktail pinball machine. Three zizzles, so you can pick up a zizzle. The two or two of the home games that Bally made. Um, the home market was definitely something that Bally wanted to achieve uh, some penetration into, and they did. So they made a couple of home games. The Fireball game definitely adapted Christensen's art, but they're very different and simplified playfield layout, but still using that same kind of trademark artwork. And the Captain Fantastic, which has a completely different um, art package than the uh, commercial game that we saw to start off this entire series of videos. You can see it. It's quite the wild game, actually, in terms of the play field art. Pretty cool game. And then we have some of the cool games here on this uh, side of the auction. This is a uh, Valley Popeye Saves the Earth, and it has a very dimensional kind of set of play field uh, features and toys. This is a tremendous game for a family. Um, it has features that make it uh, very much an equalizer type game. The plunger shot is just a button that leads into a kind of a random drop. And so there's a lot of feeling that, you know, things like that make this a game where younger kids are definitely equal to their, you know, older skilled players. And that's true. So this was a game that I actually uh, played a lot with my daughter when she was young, and it was a lot of fun. And it made it so that she could win, and it was legit, you know. It was a fun thing. And Creature from the Black Lagoon, of course, the famous title from Bally. Uh, one of the most beautiful Bally pinball machines ever made, of course, with the licensed artwork in the back class. And this is a beautiful creature. You're going to kind of take a look at some of the play field ramps and features and artwork here. As we scroll down, obviously so much said and uh, discussed about this game. I won't dwell on it, but this is uh, a nice piece to have here in this auction. Um, we have a Slugfest. This is the uh, kind of full DMD bat game. This one's a nice one. It's actually got the uh, card dispenser, so you can still actually win cards out of the game. So that is cool. Um, it's the most kind of modern ba baseball uh, game that has the DMD. NBA Fast Break. Um, this is got the back box uh, basket shooting that goes on. You can see the flipper in the back box makes a shot into the basket. So a cool feature. And on the play field, a lot of great um, uh, features in art. You see the players there. A little bit of glare is coming. Let me see if I can tilt off a little bit and see that better. Kind of look down at the details of this game. Yeah, NBA Fast Break. It's a fun basketball theme game. Definitely for the whole family on that. And Street Fighter 2. Capcom game. Uh, licensed game from Gottlieb. And you're going to see... The greatest pinball ever. The greatest pinball ever, says Chris Campbell. You can quote him. I thought it was barbed wire, but he says it's Street Fighter 2. So there you go. It shows you... Wow! Wow, that's amazing, Chris. Has my initials on. You actually completed the rule set. Well, we're waiting for the. Well, there you go. We're gonna see if we get a, a shot of the uh, the high scores here uh, in a second. Here, oh, there it is. There it is. CDC, the master. master, the master. So there it is. What more can you say? And uh, this is great. We kind of have another sports theme game here. This is Gottlieb's Big Hurt. Um, Frank Thomas's Big Hurt, to be specific. Um, it's got the kind of famous baseball glove target to shoot for, which I think is a cool feature. Another great kind of family game. Definitely, uh, if you like baseball, it's a great theme game and has the kind of modern DMD approach, so that's good. Uh, not modern now, but modern at the time. 
Um, Bugs Bunny's Birthday Ball. This is a game that, um, you know, again, these kind of have a lot of a number of family titles in this series up here, and that's that's fun to see. Um, another game with a very very kind of unusual uh, playfield layout, but just tremendous licensed art. Um, you can see that the uh, backlash. This was a collaboration between Python Angelo and John UC, and they just love these characters and did an amazing job capturing this on the translate back there. Um, beautiful, beautiful work. We got some glare going to tilt up. Um, this game has one of the most unusual playfield layouts um, ever built, and it has a reverse Tweety's slide shot. The ball actually comes down to the bottom, and then you shoot it up and around the Tweety slide, and it comes back down to the bottom of the playfield. Um, the birthday theme also has a lot of equalizer features um, in much the same way that the Popeye game has a lot of features that kind of help young players have a chance against experienced, more experienced pinball players that are older. This game does that too. And of course all the voice call outs that you'd expect at this title. And we wrap up this side of the auction with Data East's very first pinball machine, Laser War. Um, this game was uh, the first game with stereo in it, and uh, as it's 2.1 actually sound, if I call on this game. Um, the um, this is a particularly nice laser war. I think it's uh, just a nice example of the game. It's often found in kind of not so nice condition. So it's cool to see where Data East began, which you know was obviously another step forward for Gary Stern as he was progressing in his pinball career. Uh, obviously to be the legend that he is today. And so that wraps up this set of games, and we hope you enjoyed seeing them all, and look forward to our next video.